we've got to talk about this in it we have to talk about this big up Ja Morant, who now, according to Kwame Brown, is now affectionately known as NBA Dumboy. That might be one of the best names given to somebody that I've ever seen. Big up Kwame Brown, bruv, calling Ja Morant NBA Dumboy. But he got suspended again for a new possible gun video. I think most of you have already seen this video of Ja Morant in the car with his friend. And bless the friend. Bless the friend, man. The friend tries. I think people are getting on the friend a lot, but the friend did try to move the camera. He didn't know flipping he's gonna point it at the fucking or show it on the camera and if you look at the video i think the guy had like a hundred people viewing so it's not exactly like he's well known um within that kind of john Moran circle maybe not a lot of people on stream maybe before he could get away with it so he does try and move his camera but john Moran has always got that fucking blicky on him he's always told up he never feels safe he's from the mean streets he's got to let people know he's packing so he always keeps it on him it's fucking hilarious I fucking love this shit because this goes back to my thing that I said previously where I'm coming from a point of view where I think personally this is a weird take but I honestly think you should let people crash out. I think crashing out sometimes and self-sabotaging shouldn't be seen as like a cry for help. Oh, I have mental health issues. I'm going through problems at home. and uh, uh. No, sometimes people just want to crash out. And I think it's fun to crash out and especially to watch it from afar, to see somebody as talented as John Moran with guaranteed contracts, millions and millions, Nike endorsements, all this stuff, whatever, fucking it up in real time, despite all the advantages he's been given is really cool. I'm not going to lie. Just to kind of see somebody that comes from such level of privilege, wanting to so badly connect and be a part of the street life is legitimately hilarious. I swear on my life, I love to see it from afar. And I don't see why people kind of get on their soapbox and keep preaching and whatever it may be. After the first time, fair enough. Sitting down from the interview, have an intervention, talk to him man to man, have that black man conversation to him, talk about how much it means for him to get his family out of poverty and to be inspiring generations to come and put his family in position, blah, 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 blah. Give him all that speech, right? BLM, whatever, responsibility, be a man, blah, blah, blah. Cool. After the second time, you have to just accept that this is who he is. He's always going to be this guy. If it's not this gun shit, further down his career, there'll be something else will happen. That's just who he is. And I think it's perfectly fine. If it ends up costing him his career, it is what it is. It happens all the fucking time. In real life, it happens. I just don't understand this need to educate and whatever like help him like he doesn't need our help he's got enough people around him who have sense who he's choosing not to listen to <laughs> if that's what he wants to do let him do it it's just funny to see it watch happen in real time i swear to god and the reason why i think it's funny because i've got a personal experience with a similar thing where you know there was these two kids i grew up with in my area who were both really good at football what you guys would call soccer and they were representing england they were playing professionally when we were younger the kind of kids where they would have to leave school or class midway through to jump in a coach and go and play a game somewhere right they'd be really 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 kind of playing at professional level from that age and it would fill you with jealousy you're in school and flipping maths doing algebra and the friend next to you play professional football has to leave middle of the class because he's got a game he's playing he's representing his country representing his borough representing his football club as a fuck and these kids eventually what ended up kind of pursuing professional football they got to a point where they both represented England. They both got to a point where they got professional contracts with a professional club when they're adult age, like, you know, over the age of 18. And things were going well. One guy ended up being an actual legit professional. He just retired recently. And the other guy ended up kind of like flaking out, right? Mid-20s, whatever. And one thing I remember that always struck me is that the guy that went on to kind of become like a proper legend at his club and you know played for had a, i think he maybe had a couple of caps not really too sure um but in general you know played at a really good level but one thing i remember about by him is that he was you know he was married from super early he had kids really early he's still with the same girlfriend he had when i knew him back in school times um he was driving sick cars living in crazy houses and shit just you know he kind of completed life very quickly but he was also very grown up and took his professional sports career very seriously the other guy i remember one time randomly i was in my area i think i don't know how old i must have been maybe i was 21 or something walking around and i randomly bumped into him 
in the street. And this is a kid who I remember growing up with when we were 16. Again, he playing professional football. He was already on the path to go to new places. He came from a really good family. Even though he was Jamaican, you know, he didn't come from your stereotypical Jamaican background. His parents were well-educated. They were split up and they were well-educated. Um, they took him to all the places he needed to go to in terms of training. He always had flipping, you know, good clothes on and sick trainers. He was never wanting. He, we lived in a nice area. Everything was fine. So I remember randomly bumping into him on the street and he had no top on and he was flipping with a massive pit bull with a chain. Like he had like, you know what people like, you know, to show that they're hard or like sometimes in my area, they'll have like a fucking a bike chain as a flipping, as a leash. He'd have that. So he had a, the pit bull walking down the street with his, with his top off. I don't remember it was summer, but top off flexing, holding the pit bull. I remember like bumping into him saying, whoa, bro, what's going on? Like, what's up? I ain't seen in a while. And he was giving me a talk. He had a couple of gold teeth in. I was thinking, what the fuck happened to you? We were all really good boys. We came from a really nice area. Why are you trying to cosplay as you're like some goon? What's happening here? And I couldn't understand it. Like, why would you want to pretend you're gangster now at 21, which is kind of lame. It's kind of like joining a gang in your mid thirties. It's like, ugh, right? it's something that you have to join just for pure circumstance that's why it usually works right if you join a gang it's because you're just joining it because it's just for your circumstance and living in a shitty neighborhood you've got no one else to hang out with you get bullied into it there's no one else to whatever it's just what it is you don't join it by choice in your mid 30s or even your early 20s it's essentially lame i see him at the age of 21 with his top off and a pit bull with a chain i'm like what are you doing but it reminds me a lot of John Moran. Like. And then later on, I found out, you know, he flopped in football, things didn't work out for him. But this legitimately, legitimately sounds like the same thing. And I legitimately think it's okay for people to crash out. I just don't understand the need to kind of lecture people and tell them what they're doing is wrong. But they know. They just don't give a fuck. And that should be perfectly fine because it's entertaining to us. And also, some people just never figure it out. No matter how many chances they get, they never figure it out. And he might just be one of those people. I don't, I don't see the problem in it personally. Um, it's obviously disappointing to see because of his talent level. I'm sure a lot of, you know, people out there who wish they had his talent would, or maybe didn't have a bit of his talent would do way more with it. I understand. Big up Crash984. What's your friend's name? DMX. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up Crash. Man, the Vegas Super Chat. Yeah, it was <laughs> DMX. Is that, yeah, sorry. It does kind of sound like him, innit? Um, it does fucking sound like DMX. But let's continue. Let's read the article here. It says, um, Memphis Grizzly guard Jam Moran, 23, is under scrutiny for his NBA again after he flashed an object that looked like a gun. Look, big up the New York Times. <laughs> um, in the Carefree Managing Instagram live video posted on the weekend, the video, which appeared to be posted on Saturday, came just after two months the NBA suspended Moran for displaying a gun on Instagram live video filmed in a nightclub near Denver. He expressed remorse then, saying the gun did not belong to him and that he would be doing better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking love it. <laughs> the gun's not mine. So he gets caught with the gun on Instagram Live. So let's picture this, right? Superstar NBA player, baller, sick athlete, comes from a really good background, went to private school, got the full ride, everything nice and cushy. Professional basketball player doing the thing, wants a cosplay as a goon. You get caught with the blicky on Instagram Live, and as soon as you get caught, you snitch. <laughs> it wasn't mine. You start copying, please. You start having sit down interviews, heart to hearts, talking about your upbringing, how li hard life is, and mental health and all this malarkey. You go incredibly soft quickly. As soon as you get caught the first time, you snitch, you cry, and you you know, and you say whatever, right? You do all that stuff. It wasn't yours. You do better. This is hilarious. On Sunday, the Grizzlies said in a statement that they had suspended Morant from all team activities pending the league's review of the new video. Memphis was limited from the playoffs last month after losing to the Lakers in the first round. Mike Bass, a league spokesman, said NBA was aware of the post and was gathering information. Oh, so this happened off-season, technically, right? This happened off-season. So I guess there is some defense to say if it's off-season, it shouldn't be an issue. But clearly it is. The NBA have made it clear that they don't like it. I'm sure it's not illegal. I'm sure there's not a con there's not a stipulation in your contract that you sign that you can't wave a gun around if you're a professional athlete or if you're a professional basketballer. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. But the NBA have made it aware that they don't like this. They don't like this shit. So if they'd warned you the first time, you should be 
knowledgeable smile enough to be like, you know what, cool, no problem. Let's just keep it moving. I'm not going to do that again. My bad. I won't, uh, it won't happen again, whatever it may be. The fact that he's doing it again, it might just be him. He might be NBA dumb boy for real, for real. That might be okay. <laughs> I don't see the issue with it. Um, in March, the league suspended Moran for eight games after the cl nightclub video. NBA commissioner Adam Silver noted Moran's enormous following and influence in the announcement of the suspension, which classified the gun incident as a conduct detrimental to the league. Okay, cool. So technically, it is it is a rule break because it's classified as conduct detrimental to the league. Hmm. The Instagram live video was posted early on March 4th when the NBA said Moran had been in an intoxicated state. Moran sued checked into a facility in North Florida, in Florida for counselling. He went to do counselling. He said he was sorry. He snitched and said the gun wasn't his. Jesus Christ, a lot. He says, this is from last time. I'm going to take some time away to help and welcome my learning better methods of dealing with stress and my overall well-being. <laughs> stress and well-being i fucking love it i don't know man i just think at, at a certain point you know you just i wondered again let me know for my american listeners and viewers is this more of an example as to how lenient the nba is compared to football i feel like american football for better or worse they are incredibly protective of their image they don't want any bad press. So if you bring any sort of bad attention, bad press to them, they're just going to kick you out. We saw already what happened to the guy that was kneeling, right? Like most of it is because they didn't want the trouble and the issues around him kneeling and what that meant and the conversation around. They just want to play the sport. They don't fucking give a shit about politics and race, or whatever. They don't give a fuck. So I wonder if John Moran was playing and it was playing in the NFL and he did that same thing, would he be done now? Would he be absolutely done? Would he have already got kicked off a team? I wonder if that's a deal. Be a illusionary commission. Take ball out of hood, but can't take hood out ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. True. Exactly. <laughs> he's over from the hood. That's what I've read. I read he's not even from the hood. He's from like a suburbs. He grew up in, in he grew up as a middle class kid. Um, what are people saying here? Luis Chavez is saying NFL players beat their wives and kids every year and they sweep under the rug. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's not a good point then. Maybe I'm redacted in that regard. You're right, actually. There is a lot of domestic violence there. NFL is more cutthroat. Ja would have been done for sure. Okay, Tango's kind of agreeing with me there. Aaron Hernandez did a number. Her, 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 yeah, true. Charles Lucas and uh, NFL crash says the NFL is more sensitive that, to their image because people are literally dying to, for this, to play the sport. Yeah, good point. Good point. Anyway, I think my final conclusion is that let the guy crash out. I think giving people lectures online, trying to speak to their better nature, trying to reason with them is ridiculous, especially when they're in this self-sabotaging spiral. Sometimes people just don't know what they've been given until it gets taken away. It's just one of them brutal lessons you learn in life. Sometimes you take a job for granted, you get fired. Once you get fired, you're like, fuck, I should have stayed that job. I should have fucking settled down and put my head down. Other times, you have to kind of go through this shit to realize what you have. And also, when it comes to sports, I'm a big believer. Again, I've, I've maybe because the area that I've kind of grown up in, there's been a lot of guys and girls I know who've kind of pursued professional sports. Some of them have achieved their dreams. Some of them haven't. And sometimes seeing somebody who doesn't isn't able to achieve their dreams to be a professional sports person is kind of sad really upsetting and can really bum you out to see somebody who kind of puts all their chips into being an athlete and it doesn't work out for them it's kind of difficult to kind of wrangle and it kind of bums you out the same way if you meet a friend who's trying to pursue being a rapper and they're in their mid 30s there's nothing worse than that right saying to oh promote my mixtape share this share that it can kind of make you feel sad inside but one thing people don't talk about enough are the people, and I know a lot of them, who are just gifted in whatever sport they play, but they don't like the sport. So imagine that. Imagine being gifted in playing a sport, but you're not really in love with it. You just have natural ability to play it, natural acumen. You have God-given IQ, God-given explosiveness, speed, strength, agility, coordination, and you have to go through the camps. You have to train, go to games, you know analyze tape press conferences it could just get tiring after a while like i don't give a fuck you know and that can maybe that can maybe um show you can maybe kind of um subconsciously show that through your actions that you don't really give a fuck that might be one of them yeah exactly people are saying in the chat I, um 
Ben White for Arsenal is a good example. That's a good example. You just don't give a fuck. Oh, yeah, true, Teju. Ben White dipped from England. Yeah, they, they, they never really understood. They never really explained why that was, right? He left the England camp midway through because he just, what? Because he wasn't on it anymore? Was it actually an issue back home? Who knows? But there is a real big issue with that also. Being a professional athlete at the top level and not loving what you do. Because it's already, like, imagine you now at work. You don't like what you're doing at work day to day, but you turn up there because, you know, you have to fucking pay the bills or whatnot. But imagine it on an athlete point of view, what you're putting your body through, abstaining from alcohol and drugs, having to eat a certain way for the majority of the year, missing out on trips and the holidays, not seeing your family and friends, um, maybe not being able to see the important moments of your kids growing up, blah, 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 blah the hate the fickle nature of sports anyway one day love you one day they hate you all that stuff if you don't love the sport it can be hard to just turn up every day maybe that's part of it who knows either way let the guy crash out it's fun to watch if he figures it out he figures it out if he doesn't hey it's fun to watch <laughs> i don't give a fuck i'm not gonna pretend i, I, I care <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna pretend i care anyway moving on from this one um like look at this headline actually from from the jammer and stuff look at this people writing these horrible fucking op-eds about it and trying to make it seem like it's one it's a big it's a bigger issue it's a bigger issue no it isn't the guy wants to crash out it is what it is look at this headline from the guardian i know it's the guardian look at this headline jam moran masculinity and the misguided way of the gun <laughs> what nigga what look at the opening paragraph I, w I will get to the messy tale of John Morant shortly, but first, a personal history. I grew up in South Dallas. Our house was repeatedly broken into. Drive-bys were the regular occurrence. Man, shut the fuck up, man. Who's this guy as well? Who is it? Memph Who's this guy? Lee Esco Escobedo. Shut the fuck up, man. Personal history. I grew up in a rough area. No one cares. No one fucking cares. It's not an excuse. We all, we all grew up in rough circumstances. Right, whether it's one parent household, parents that don't give a fuck about you, um, not enough money, not enough opportunities, we all have our fucking personal struggle. This whole fucking poverty struggle Olympics shit that people do, where they try and one up each other. Oh, I had it hard. No, I had it harder. No one cares at a certain point in time, especially after the age of eighteen. No one fucking gives a shit. Go out there, work for your shit. If you have opportunity, hustle and, and work for it. Hold on to it. If you have a family to look after, make sure you're able to provide for them, look after them, care for them, kids, whatever it may be. Hold them down. That's what you need to be doing. Look after yourself. But all this fucking shit, oh, blame me to say that. Look at this headline. Masculinity the misguided way of the gun. Are you having a fucking laugh? <laughs> Fuck off. Honestly, who gives a shit about all of that stuff? Honestly. 